And I'll just mention one other thing that's really important for your listeners. Uh, not only are these six trillion of public pension assets not regulated by federal law, not regulated under state law, they're they're overseen by these funds are overseen by boards that are layman. These are not professional fiduciaries. They do not have any real trading. They're predominantly school teachers, firefighters, police, and other government workers, sanitation workers in Atlanta, for example. There is no professional oversight of these public pensions. If the money's squandered, it ultimately comes out of the taxpayer's pocket. Well, my name is Mike Maselli, and this is The Energy Show with REI Energy where we're energizing your investments and maximizing your tax deductions. Today, we're going to be talking about oil and pensions, and you're going to discover how public pensions adopted ESG guidelines, oftentimes to the neglect of investors, and how pensions are fighting back. My guest today is Ted Seidel. Ted is nationally recognized as an authority on investment management, pensions, and security matters. Great to have you on the show today, Ted. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, so there's been a lot of news, I mean, a lot of out in the news talking about ESG and uh, a lot of these public pension funds, you know, now have basically incorporated those types of investments and in, in, in a lot of their funds. And I guess my biggest, you know, what I wanted to really try to find out is, you know, I mean, is this good for the investor or the person that invests money into these pension plans? Well, let me start by giving you the high-level view of, of public pensions in the United States. And by the way, I wrote this book with Robert Kiyosaki, who stole my pension, is about primarily public pensions, also deals with corporate pensions. But the thing to realize about, there's about $6 trillion in state, county, city pension funds. Set, these are pension funds that have been set up to provide retirement security for uh, government, state and local government workers. Of course, the uh, we're all stakeholders in these pensions because we all, as taxpayers, pay into them. Not only do the workers pay into them, when the employers pay, them, taxpayers pay in well. So this six trillion dollars is largely unregulated. Uh, Many of your listeners have probably heard of ERISA, which is the comprehensive federal law that applies to corporate pensions. There's a huge loophole in ERISA. State and local pensions are not subject. They are not subject to any comprehensive federal law. Likewise, they're not subject to any comprehensive state or local law. So many of the questions that come up in, with regard to public pensions there is no answer in law. Many many questions that come up for corporate pensions under ERISA, there are very clear in. But in public funds, there are not these. There is no comprehensive law. There's a patchwork quilt of regulations in every state, every county, but they don't answer many of the most fundamental questions. And I'll just mention one other thing that's really important for your listeners. Uh, uh, not only are these six trillion of public pension assets not regulated by federal law, not regulated under state law, they're they're overseen by these funds are overseen by boards that are layman. These are not professional fiduciaries. They do not have any real trading. They're predominantly school teachers, firefighters, police and other government workers, sanitation workers in Atlanta, for example. So there is no professional oversight of these public pensions. So with that as a background, I can answer any question you have, <laughs> because there really are no rules here. And what governs today is what I refer to in the Stone Life Pension as the politicization of the investment process. If you go into any city, state, county pension file. Uh, first of all, all public pension funds are supposed to be transparent. They're all supposed to be um, governed by state public records laws. You, me, anybody who wants to know how 
your state pension fund is investing its money, theoretically, under state law, has a right to know how public monies are being spent. Public monies, public scrutiny. Supposed to come hand in hand. But these pensions have become so adept at evading public records laws, you really can't see. So the decisions on how these pensions are invested, the Florida pension is all kinds of garbage. Everything you can imagine under the sun, venture capital, uh, real estate, uh, and it, of all sites, of all types. I've seen in public pensions, beanie babies, beanie babies, yeah. rare coin. I've seen uh, chicken coops, all kinds, you name it, I've seen it in a public pension. And so what's driving the decisions? Is it the sound fiduciary process? Is it law? No. All it. So with, that's the background I'd like to give you. Okay. Well, that's great. And uh, in fact, a lot of stuff. So what if I hear you correctly, you're saying that us as taxpayers, you know, are really investors into these pension plans because obviously we approve the salaries of a lot of these public workers and, you know, and then of course our tax dollars go to, to pay their salaries. So when they invest into these pension plans that, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much have boards that are elected, not necessarily because they're investment professionals, but because they have tenure or something along those lines where they can, you know, decide where this money is invested. Is, is that, that kind of what you were saying? That's right. And there's only a couple of city, counties, states that require any of these board members to have any professional training. That there's some rare, you know, there's a there's some rare exceptions like right. Kentucky. I think it used to be one board member at have uh training of some sort in the finance. Typically these guys would come out of bank trust departments back in the old. Uh but by and large, there is no requirement that these board members be have any trade. So, and yes, we are all what we call stakeholders with these pensions. We are contributing to them as the workers are and as the employers are, all stakeholders in these funds. And so if they're mismanaged, if the money's squandered, it ultimately comes out of taxpayer's pocket uh, or they're either only, as we explained in the book, who stole my pension, there's there's three drivers to pension health. One is how much money goes into the pot. Two is what happens to the money as it's in the pot cooking for 30 years. And the third is what flows out of the pot. So if the money is mismanaged, money in the pot is mismanaged, that either more money's got to go in or the benefits have got to be cut. And then you come, then you're kind of at a point of where you have government bailouts, right? I mean, because obviously if these public workers lose their pension, if it's not managed correctly, then of course, you know, we, the taxpayers end up footing the bill for that. So we all should care about it, right? Absolutely. And that's what I, I found nationally is that everybody, whether they are a participant in these funds or just a stakeholder, a taxpayer, everybody has an opinion on them. Everybody has a vested interest in seeing that they're properly. Absolutely. So I was at a conference and, and uh, they had a speaker there from CalPERS, which is the teachers, California Teachers Union. And this is at a time, you know, when all of this environmental social governance was starting to take off. And, of course, one of the things she said was that, you know, that CalPERS had made an election that they would no longer invest in fossil fuels, that they were only going to invest in green energy. Well, more recently, we've seen a lot of these green energy companies that were basically subsidized by the government. A lot of them are now in financial trouble. Uh, you know, and, and of course, a lot of this pension money has been invested. I don't know if it's, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, but, you know, they've made this decisions to invest in a lot of this green, green energy. And so if that ends up going sideways, I mean, obviously, maybe the funds are so large, people won't, won't realize it. But, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's some companies that are in serious financial trouble. So, 
what does that do? I mean, you know, someone like yourself, I know you, you've been involved in a lot of lawsuits and stuff with pensions and taking them to court and stuff in the past. And, uh, so, so does the, does that give these investors, these, these pitching investors grounds to stand on? Well, again, whether it's green energy or economically targeted investment, you know, some pension funds have built football stadiums, use pension money to build, you know, build a football stadium, a convention center, like I said, Beanie Babies, Rare Coins, uh, all kinds of crazy venture capital deals. You know, somebody comes to town and says, look, we're going to build a bourbon factory in the middle of uh, the desert. And it will stimulate economic development. Where are we going to get the money? Hey, let's go to the city pension. And that's what they do. So it's it's one thing is, uh, is, is, it, is a green energy deal a good deal? or not, I don't know, but I can tell you that the process that these funds follow is largely driven by politics. So even if you said you're only going to invest in whatever, uh, company, I've seen this companies based in, uh, Cincinnati, you know, Cincinnati pension fund, you're only going to invest in, in companies based in Cincinnati. Well, is it going to be, is the pension going to invest, invest in the best companies in Cincinnati? Uh, I wouldn't be too sure. Maybe the com companies in Cincinnati that have the best political influence, <laughs> okay, but not necessarily the best company. So that's a danger uh, across the board. Uh, whether they, whether it's ESG or ET ETI, is uh, economically targeted invest like football stadiums, convention centers in your city. Some pensions have uh, set, you know. We're going to give priority to deals that'll stimulate the local economy. Uh, invariably, they turn out to be losers. They have a lot of lobbyists, obviously, that lobby the government as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The governor, the mayor, you name it. Uh, I had one catch, and this was 20 years ago, which was uh, Nashville. Uh, I was hired by that city to go through it, and they discovered that there were when you and when you target money to a local economy you basically invite influence peddlers in your door it's just you know you you everybody in the community is going to come to you and so what they found was uh that this investing in local deals actually created a tremendous risk of influence peddling so they were one of the only pension funds, this was back in 2001, that said they were going to not, they were going to stop investing in the local, economically targeted investments in the local community because the evidence of overreaching was was so substantial that they thought it was more prudent to not. I see. So when you and Robert decided to write the book about who stole my pension, I mean, were you mainly talking about a lot of these fiduciaries that you know, actually make these types of decisions? Yeah, absolutely. We were, uh, first of all, what, one of the things that Robert and I agreed on at the outset was that nobody needed another book about pensions that no one understood or read. So I tried to keep this as simple as possible, but as revolutionary as possible as well. The information in this book, you won't find any, there is no discussion of uh, the fact that all these pensions lie every single day um, in their financial statements. They'll say, you know, for example, let, let's say oil. They'll say we have 1% of our portfolio in oil. Do they really have 1% of their portfolio? Don't count them. Uh, because they can have oil in commodity funds. They can have oil in, you know, they can have oil limited partnerships. They So, the characterization of the investment portfolio as disclosed to the public is almost always wrong. And so th these are some of the concepts I wanted to get out. All pensions lie about their investments. All pensions lie about the fees they pay. All pensions lie about their performers. All of them, 100%. Uh, in my 40 years of doing this work, I've never found one that didn't uh, rig 
It's, uh, well, sh- <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they use investment benchmark and, uh, which they create to judge themselves. It's never a straightforward benchmark like the S&P 500. I, I often tell the joke, what do you call a, a benchmark you don't be? Answer is your old bench. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So these are some of the concepts we wanted to get across to people is that uh, it's very difficult to pick any issue you want. China, if you want to find out how much the state of Florida, which is one of the largest pension funds in the country, or Calper, has invested in China, good luck, because you can't. Even the pe- people running the pension themselves aren't savvy enough to know uh, cause it can be hidden in all kinds of portfolios directly and indirectly. So it's, it's, uh, very difficult for the public to know and what, and there's so much secrecy in, involved in these deals that what I found is, um, the, 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 pu- the purpose of public scrutiny is to determine whether the people running the pet should know what they're doing. But since you don't have public scrutiny, what I found is the people who are running the pension don't know what they're not getting the documents either. You know, they will lie to you about their performance or whatever, but do they really know what their performance is? Probably not. Um, so there's that double whammy of, of secrecy. Secrecy, Wall Street is managing its money, these files, in a manner that not made public and in a manner that they they keep these state pension funds who are often regarded by Wall Street as the quote unquote dumbest investors in the room. Uh, they keep them in the dark too. So if you're a investor or a taxpayer, I mean, what you're saying is you really, you really can't find out where your money's being invested. And I guess another question I have, are these board members, are they elected for life or are they basically elected every several years? I mean, what is the criteria for a lot of these these people that run these funds, most of them are elected for a period of like four years. Uh, some are appointed by, like for example, in the a given city, the mayor will be allowed to either sit on have one or two seats on the pension board or designate someone as his designee because um, he's got other things to do. So those people, they you know that would be whenever subject to their appointment by the mayor. But typically these these people are on these boards, um, I, I think typically two to four years, and there are elections. And uh, it's used to be these elections were, uh, you know, incredibly boring. Nobody cared. Nowadays I've seen elections where uh, unions like the NEA, National Education Service, has spent, hundreds of thousands of dollars to get one of their union people on the pension board, a non-paid position. Why is it important to have that union member on the board? You know, politics and it's, and they're willing to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of teacher membership dues to get their board members on this board. That didn't used to be the case, before, but that is the case. So are people finally starting to wise up to these, these what's going on in these pensions, or is it just continuing down the road like our government, right? We, we, we really don't, you know, these people that are being elected or, you know, they it, it's all about, like you were saying, politics, right? I mean, whoever's on the board, you know, basically controls the purse strings. Yeah, and, and, co- and control perception of reality, too. Right. These, these funds will live in a you know, altered reality, uh, where they, I've never in my 40 years of doing this work, met a pension that claimed it wasn't in the top, a top report. You know, it's like the <laughs> Lake Wobegon things. There are, there are no, uh, average kids here. They're all, uh, gifted. Um, <laughs> so, and the, uh, secrecy has gotten a lot more profound. I mean, in the last five, 10 years, um, there was a time 20 years ago where you could go into any of these pensions and ask to see all their investments. So you could request it and you'd get them all. 
of the law. And they'd be pretty boring. You know, they'd be a contract with Fidelity to manage a large cap equity portfolio. The fee would be whatever, 50 basis points. That's about all the contract would say. It was, you know, I wrote those contracts back in the day when I was a lawyer for a large investment firm. So very boring stuff. But then as things got more esoteric, secrecy uh, crept in. So it is uh, harder than ever today. And you will see on the state level here in Florida, DeSantis, Governor DeSantis has um, really worked hard to eviscerate state public records laws, whether it's records regarding his travel or whether it's uh, pension records. So um, public scrutiny has has uh, I don't know, gotten a lot uh, worse in the last 10 years. So it's, the public is, um, well, I guess you'd say the public is aware of some of these issues like ESG or whatever, but does the public or even the politicians run it who are driving this debate, do they even, is any more knowledge getting out to the public? I, I don't think so. It's pretty much uh, under airlock. You can't airtight. You really can't get this information. I'm suing the uh, this Ohio Teachers Pension Fund uh, on behalf of school teachers. 30,000 school teachers hired me to investigate their pension fund because they weren't allowed to see how their money. <laughs> I did a public records request two years ago that is supposed to go to the Supreme Court of Ohio any day now. I'm still waiting. And this is just for basic prospectuses and other investment documents that are, you know, fundamental for public to see. Any regulator, I used to be at the SEC, any regulator will tell you, read the prospectus before you invest, right? Right. <laughs> what if you're not allowed to see them? What if your <laughs> retirement savings is in these deals and you, school teacher, 83 years old, aren't allowed to see the prospectus. That's the current state uh, of affairs. And so, no, the, the public uh, is really not aware of, uh, of these issues. Uh, from time to time, one of these funds will announce a major uh, mistake, uh, There'll be a flare up, a controversy, um, but really the big picture of what's going on here is not, hasn't improved at all. Wow. Sounds like the federal government, right? I mean, as far as that, you got to pass it before you can read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to invest in it before you can read the prospectus. <laughs> well, it's very, it's very difficult because there are, like here in Florida, there are hundreds of uh, city pension funds in the state of Florida. Hundreds. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking maybe 600. I, I don't know how many. And those are just the little ones. Then you got the mega ones, the state ones. So if you're if you're living in the city of oh, Raton, where I live, do you have any idea, you know, how many pension funds there are in the city? I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a police and fire pension fund, and probably in general employees pension. Who, you know, who's on those boards? I don't, I'm the leading national expert. No one's ever asked me to sit on those boards. <laughs> Why is that? Yeah. It doesn't pay money. You know? <laughs> Why is it nobody wants me to be on those boards? I have written, literally written a book. So you, because they don't want somebody who's, who's knowledge. But so it's very hard wherever you're sitting in this country to figure out, uh, there are so many, you know, factions. It's not like the federal government is one big bureaucracy. The state and local city county, it's thousands of little, so are little, so are big. What they're doing, nobody knows, nobody watches. And also, this is one of the problems with the demise of local media, is the only persons who would be writing about the city of Boca Raton pension fund would presumably be a local newspaper, which there really isn't any. Nobody really does any research on them to determine. I mean, I guess if you're you're one of the employees and your your pension's not growing, and you know you want to know what it's invested in, then like you're saying, very difficult to get information out of them, even if you're if you're a teacher, you know, wanting to know. 
Yeah, they want to, the teachers want to know, the workers want to know, but they get stonewalled. And if they, most of these funds are supposed to have an open meeting. So every now and then a teacher, a firefighter, cop will go to one of these meetings, but they'll make it clear to you very quickly. They don't want you. Um, the two things that these pods hate the most are people showing up meetings and the other is public records. <laughs> so they're so, lucky if you're trying to, and then and, and you, you're quite right. The people, these, these retirees want to know how their retirement savings are being invested and they are aware that on average, these funds are like maybe 65% funded, which means they don't have the money because it's been squandered. So they're, that people know that participants in these funds know they're in trouble and they are seeking information, but they're just not able to get it. Even I, as an expert and as a lawyer, I can't get it. Now it are Without suing for years. What? It, if you're an employee, are you required to to invest in these pension funds? Sure, yeah. So you're required to spend, put to invest your money there. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and your employer's putting money in it. The taxpayers are putting money into it, and uh, so it's. But you don't know how your money's being invested. That's, that's the the danger. That's amazing. I didn't. Uh realize that it you know it's kind of like social security or something right i mean you're 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 basically required to put money in every month and you know we know it's not funded and you know but as long as people continue to come in and work there they're hoping to stay ahead of the curve without you know shedding any light on it yeah and, and by the way many of these uh state workers don't have so here well how this is it oh you this know, is they, it huh yeah like like in ohio the school teachers they don't have social security uh, so this is the one, uh, you know, retirement plan they have, and, uh, they know that it's being mismanaged in Ohio. They, uh, cut the benefits to workers. They eliminated the cost of living adjustments. Uh, so they are forced into this fund. They know they don't participate in social security. Their benefits are being cut, but the fund refuses to tell them where the money's going and uh, how it's invested. So it's, it's a... Have any of these funds ever filed bankruptcy? Back the the city of Detroit and the pension funds, I think, flirted with bankruptcy. The first, this here's, here's a real uh, uh, on the gem for you. The first American pension to seek bankruptcy protection was drum roll Saipan <laughs> Saipan I was I flew out there God 20 something years ago um, it is an American territory and it has or had government pension just state or territorial right. pension same as here in the United States they attempted to declare bankruptcy back in the early 2000s I believe that was defeated. Detroit went through a, a, a bankruptcy. I don't know. I was asked by the Justice Department to take a look there, but then at the last minute, somebody decided they didn't. I got a call <laughs> saying, can you do it? I said, sure. And then that was, uh, they said they didn't want anyone. To... <laughs> so um, some states like Kentucky, the pension is, dangerously close to I mean last I heard that Kentucky pension was only twelve percent. Wow. That's twelve cents for every dollar in benefits that have been promised. So uh I'm not aware you know, I, I don't know for sure which one if any funds actually successfully declared bankruptcy, but I know that uh Saipan and, and Detroit were two that uh were wow. Or try to. Yeah, it's not a laughing matter, obviously, with, you know, a lot of people's livelihood on the line, and especially when they, you know, work for these pensions for their whole lives and, you know, expect to be taken care of, and then all of a sudden you come to the realization that your money has been squandered, and, you know, and a lot of these so-called, you know, political 
moves. I'm not saying that it's all ESG. I'm sure there's bad investments in any type of investment that that you can have. But you know, a lot of these, like BlackRock, this huge, you know, fund. I mean, you know, they've got a govern governance now where they, you know, want to invest so much in ESG to try to promote green energy. And I mean, I believe we need all forms of energy. Obviously, we need wind, we need solar, we need oil and gas, but a lot of these investments, they seem to make them just on a political whim versus, you know, actually doing research about it. Well, most of what these funds, you know, let me emphasize, most of what these, how these funds invest is driven by politics. It's called, I call it the politicization of the investment, <laughs> which means that investment decisions aren't based by merit, based by performance, not based on results. They're based on who you know. And, and, you know, you know, what are the politics behind this? Well, I talk about, I introduced this concept in the book, um, uh, gross malpractice generally practice. Uh, that's what these funds do. Their standard operating procedure, all these is to do is to make decisions based upon, you know, who likes this investment. And so whether it's ESG or China, uh, you, whatever the, whatever the, the, uh, search that they're, what I are looking for, you can be pretty sure that the best and the brightest are not being chosen. <laughs> it's the best, you know, it's the best connected. And oh, with the exception of things like, you know, an index fund, which is pretty hard to uh, screw up. Uh, but most of these investments are being driven by politics. And, the, you know, when a lot of these politicians, when they go out and they, say, you know, let's defund the police and all that. They push these agendas and, you know, basically it's caused a lot of police to, you know, get out of the profession that they're in. I mean, do they still get paid by the pensions or if they decide to leave, do they, are they, um, you know, there, is their pension taken away from them? How does that work? Well, there's, you know, there's vesting periods. You have to work a certain number of years to tell okay. the difference between a pension and 401k, 401k. You know, it's portable. When you leave, wait, right. if you leave your employer after five years, you take that money with you. Right. And a pension, you may work there for five years and have and leave with no pension benefit at all. But if you have, if you're there for twenty years or thirty years, then you have this defined benefit. Uh, you get this pension. So it all depends. On, you know, that's the often been the discussion over the years of are pensions better or four hundred one k's better? Well. 401ks are better if you not staying at the job very long, but you intend to spend your entire career as a police officer or a school teacher, then the pension would be a better bet. That's but funny. so it, it, it all depends on uh, uh, <clears throat> how long they've been. But one of the things I, I would mention to your listener is that, uh, yeah, there's there are stories of some of these pensions that are really pretty outrageous uh but those are by far the minority these pension benefits typically are are comparable to social security you know what thirty thousand a year forty thousand dollars a year there are bizarre exceptions of the entire fire cheat that's getting two hundred and fifty thousand. but that is a an abuse and b very rare i wouldn't defend that situation I wouldn't take one breath to defend that. But if you look at the average, the average is roughly comparable to uh, Social Security. And uh, again, many of these people don't get Social Well, Ted, it was great having you on the show today. Um, can you tell our listeners how to get your book? Yeah, well, it's on Amazon. I would encourage you to get this book I wrote with Robert is about how pensions are being looted by politicians in Wall Street. Then I also wrote this book, How to Steal a Lot of Money Legally, which is actually breaks down with the the devices that are used by Wall Street. And uh, it is all true documents gotten from SEC filings and investigations I've done. Uh, so the two books uh, will give you a pretty good idea of what's going on in, at 
at pensions around this country. There's some pretty interesting stories in those books. Oh, yeah. There's some of the crazy stuff I know. Uh, <laughs> I am. At the... what, what, what I have a lot of fun in this book about how one guy I was investigating had his picture on Facebook in front of a private jet. Here's my jet. Of course it wasn't. Yeah, so I, I talk about how I create a fake resume, how I create a fake Facebook profile, all these. So they're all kind of fun, but they're based on true uh, uh, people I've investigated. And it's pretty, you know, go to a Ferrari dealer, sit in the car, take a picture, post it on Facebook. This is you, right? <laughs> and these are the kind of things we see uh when you go into pensions and the investing world generally. Wow. I'm going to have to get a copy of that and, and read it. And I think that's pretty interesting. All available on Amazon. You can get it. All right. Well, again, thank you very much, Ted. I'd like to have you back in the future. Love to do it. Thanks again for thinking of these. Okay. Thanks, Great. Ted. I appreciate it. You've been listening to The Energy Show with REI Energy. Energize your investments and maximize your tax deductions. To learn more, go to reienergy.com.